you died on the cross for us. And today you have given us such life of freedom and liberty. But we pray that you will reign in us by the leading of your spirit in all we do. In our decision making, in our thoughts, every action of ours. We pray that it to be you. Go ahead of us. Order our steps. Let the days for which that is ahead of us be the life that is led by the Holy Spirit. We are grateful to you for saving us and making us to do what we are. We give all the glory and all the honor. To you be all the glory indeed and the honor. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, this is another day we are here and uh, blessed to have such an opportunity to reflect, uh, to look at the Word of God. To open our heart to what the word of God has to bring to our understanding so that we can apply the words of the Lord to our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Well, not too long, and we were going through some teachings regarding Easter. You have been with us, and you have heard us look into the word as such. You know, all that Christ has responded to the call of the Father, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, respond to the call of the Father, come to this earth to save mankind from our sins, but have to go through all this pain, and have to go through all this suffering, and eventually die. He was not just, he didn't just die, he was crucified, or to say killed, but he did go through all this for the sake of your salvation and my salvation. But as we have learned so far, that wasn't the end of it. As he said to the disciples, as he made it, you know, clear, he more or less prophesied about what was to take place. That uh, as he dies, you know, he will rise up in, on the third day. He did become such. There was that fulfillment exactly as he did say. But then again, it didn't end there. We all know that. And like I said last week, many times the story of the Easter, or what we look at as a commemoration of Easter, seems to end at that point. But that wasn't it, because when Jesus died, he lived with many people and revealed himself alive. The word says he presented himself. You know, he made men to see him. You know, disciples saw him. Uh, the, as you already have heard us, uh, the, the, the two that were on the road to Emos, you know, they saw him. You know, there were over 500 according to Paul's own, you know, account that actually saw him alive. I mean, when you look at all these things, it should encourage you, it should strengthen you, it should build you, it should make you see the faithfulness of God and the power of God in His Word. You know, many times, many people are running from one place to the other, wanting the, wanting people to prophesy over their lives. You know, I mean, when you look at this, it tells you about who has knowledge of what is going to come. You know, and that is our son, our, that is the son of the living God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who is God? And so this very day, we have been looking into that for a certain extent. Living for 40 days on this earth, we got to a point of this time, he had to go. Because that was not the end. He was not resurrected and to live here on this earth. So last week and a few days and a few Sundays, we had also been looking to the fact that there was what is referred to the ascension of Jesus Christ. Ascension of Jesus Christ, which is basically the return of our Lord and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, uh, uh, to his Father, you know, in order to establish his kingdom, having completed his work here on earth. Basically, when he finished everything, and we said this last time, you know, he came to this earth because he was told by the Father to come to this earth. He gave me a very clear assignment what to do. And on this earth, he even declared that his food or his meat is to do and to finish what is the will of the Father. And so that was the case. After he had done everything, he ascended. And he did. We are looking at to what the, uh, 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 the significance or the importance of that means. I'm not going to go through that necessary today. But there was one thing that he did say. And I wanted to start from that scripture. We're going to go back to Acts of Apostles and maybe looking into... Today we want to begin to introduce, you know, a subject. You know, I don't know whether you have 
actually consider it as such. I know we made mention, we do make mention of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit all the time. But the fact is, many of us don't really, really, really know Him as we should. Because when we know Him and uh, know what He stands for, what He does and can do, you know, we'll be able to relate to Him <coughs> as such and be able to experience Him and enjoy the benefit of a such a, 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 a helper, the Bible refers to him as such. There are several titles or names that is given to it that reference, and even symbols of what the Holy Spirit is. So come this weeks, we will see if we can touch on that subject. It's quite a broad, I realize that it's quite a broad subject having to pick the topic, the Holy Spirit. But we are looking at it from the scripture of Acts chapter 1. Let's go back to remind ourselves what we read last time when it came to that. And we can see it as going back to some scriptures in their gospel, also to refer to Jesus' own promises. Because he actually did say he has to go. And then when he goes, he will send. In fact, he said he will ask the Father. You know, and then he says he will send. So let's look at it from Acts chapter 1. Let's look at some scriptures here, uh, just to uh, see where it stands. And this record is by uh, Luke. Uh, written to look as we all know if you want to read the book of Acts or the Acts of Apostles is basically uh, the same look that we have written in the Blue Gospel a doctor who was bringing this uh, records to Theophilus uh, presumably to be uh, the believer that lived in Rome the, in Rome but let's look at it from verse I'm going to read from verse 1 the former account Rome, uh, Acts chapter 1 the former account I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. I'm going to come back very soon to this verse 4 again, but let's read on to verse uh, 8. It goes on to say in verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I don't know, but possibly maybe I want to refer to this teaching on the Holy Spirit, not just because it has various facets, but we will want to look at the main emphasis that we all know we would like to see Him as in our lives. So I want to refer to this as the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit. As you have rightly heard, uh, I say, you know, this was Jesus. Let's go again look at some scriptures. So verse 4, look at what verse 4 says to us here. And being assembled together with them, who Jesus Christ assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. He commanded them, but to wait for the promise. There was a promise. And if you look into the scriptures, we know, you know, he himself had made promise. And even when we look into the Old Testament in Joel, we also know that there's a prophetic declaration as to the Holy Spirit coming upon all uh, men, mankind, if you like, those that will believe. He says, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, You have heard from me. So let's look at it of that reference. I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Now, if you look at it, it says this Behold, I send the promise of my Father. This is Jesus Christ's own words. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured, endued with power from on high. 
So when you read just this verse, Jesus making known to the disciples not to make any move. Obviously, when Jesus came to this earth, he came and <coughs> established, he came for a purpose. He came to um, see to it that mankind, you know, found salvation. That's why he came and died. And that the gospel was preached wherever he was. He was, well, what's the gospel? The good news. You know, he preached, he healed, he demonstrated in the power of God. He did all that and they made them to understand how they can have their lives, you know, uh, turn around. And if you know the story of uh, Nicodemus being made to understand the need for being born again. Now, Jesus comes here and says, stay here. You know, behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until... So when you even look into this very verse, it tells you that as the Holy Ghost was, in other words, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, was promised, it was, he was, he was promised a person, so it's not it. He was promised for a particular assignment. He was promised to be here. In fact, many, we're going to read some scriptures that talk about he came as a helper. I mean, there was so much he came to do. He came as to, if you like, to replace, I won't use the word I said, but he came, Jesus Christ was here as the incarnate of the Father, the Son of God. He came to represent God, like God on earth. And as Jesus left, the Holy Ghost came down, he came to continue. By the way, you know that we talk about the triune God as a Father, as a Son, and the Holy Spirit. They had been from day one of creation. When the Bible says creation began and it was said, let us, it was more or less referring to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These were three of them, you know, at work, you know, bringing creation to being. So the, the God we talk about, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the same. They are, what I mean the same is that God in three persons, but they are the same. That's one God. That's something that many times people find it difficult to understand. So when you look into that scripture, it tells us very clearly as to why the Holy Spirit was to come and why they needed to be there, that they will be empowered. They will be strengthened. There's so much the Holy Ghost on earth here uh, is for us. And many times we don't even seem to realize that as believers of Christ, I mean, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, He's the one, you know, uh, as of, as I said earlier on, I mean, there's several descriptions we can give to the Holy Spirit. Maybe let me put it this way, as who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not an, uh, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, is a person, I think, to begin with. You know, it's something that you and I must be very clear about. The Holy Spirit, you know, is a person. He's a co is co-equal and co-eternal Spirit of the Father. Let me just be, be, be trying to uh, explain this. The Holy Spirit is a person, but he's co-equal and co-eternal spirit of the Father and the Son who inspired even the scriptures as we read. The Bible talks about in 2 Timothy, you know, 3, 16, who inspire and brings new life to the people of God. And the Spirit of God is, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's portrayed you know, um, uh, as, as the breath, as the life. So we'll come to these things, but let us this very day just look at to some few information, maybe going ahead of me, but still to mention about what he came here and what he was meant to be doing in this very case. So as you look at the word of God, as we read Acts chapter 1 and also reading now Luke chapter 24, we can see clearly the Holy Spirit was given for a purpose. When Jesus was here, Jesus came here as the counselor, if you like. He's the counselor. The Bible talks about him, Isaiah. The counselor, he is a God in God uh, uh, with us. Hallelujah. Now, when he had to leave, he as a person at the time was seen only at that particular area that he was. Although, as I always say, he could be he could see what was happening around, but many would not see him only when uh, in and in that environment where he was. Now, it was going to be need for the church was going to be born. At this point, we haven't seen the church born. The church, I'm talking about the followers of Christ have not been declared to be Christians yet. You know, but it was still at gender of God that the gospel was not just going to go to the Jews, but it was going to go to the Gentiles. And so the church was going to be born. But how were they going to even live when Jesus Christ is gone? They needed the God to be there to strengthen, to lead, to direct, to guide, to equip, you know, to, to, to comfort to comfort, in fact, that is the name for the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos. You know, to comfort, hallelujah. You know, to, 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 to build 
and, 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 and it's such a useful understanding that all believers of Christ should be very much aware of. Because as much as many times we go even to pray and all we want to do is our Father who is in heaven. We don't realize what God the Father has done by giving unto us the Holy Spirit here. No wonder the Bible says in John that as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Romans also say the same thing. So it is important that we do understand certain things that the Bible is teaching regarding the Holy Spirit. You know, so that we'll be able. The point of our subject today is not only just the fact that Jesus was going and that he was going to send the Holy Spirit to us. But also in so studying that word of, of the, of the, from the scriptures to know that what he was here to do. Who he was and how we are to relate to him. Hallelujah. And when you read the Bible, it teaches you a lot of the third things that Jesus Christ had to mention uh, regarding him coming onto this earth and to become. You know, the Holy Spirit, he was also referred to as the counselor. Counselor. Jesus as counselor. But Jesus said that another comforter, another counselor. And that's the Greek word I just mentioned that's being referred to as paracletos. So he was to come to this earth and there were certain we're going to be breaking down in the coming days, more not necessarily today, you know, to really see, you know, how that is relevant to your life and my life as a believer. But you know, certainly, for, you know for certain that you and I cannot live this life. We couldn't save ourselves. It's by grace that we are saved, not by our works. Whatever good we are to do today wouldn't have brought us or given us salvation or eternal life. It is the grace of God that made it so. That even the Holy Spirit, again, if you talk about the Holy Spirit, He is the seal of our salvation. So it is the grace of God that had brought us to a place of salvation. Now, to be saved doesn't mean, yes, today saved, forever saved. And for that matter, it doesn't matter what you do. We are supposed to live the life that we are expected by God, as he has instructed in the Holy Scriptures or the Word of God. But you know how it is sometimes we can read the Word of God and still we don't understand? We have the Holy Spirit as a teacher, as a helper. As the one that is able to bring understanding to us and empower us even to do that which God expects of us. You remember in Matthew, Matthew chapter 28 and as well as um, Matthew chapter 16. Before Christ even had to die and speaking to the disciples as to how uh, they had to go into the world. He commissioned them. That's the word that we always have used. Commanding, commanding them to go into the nations or to all people to preach the gospel. What did he say? He made mention, I think it is good that we make some reference to that. So open with me to that scripture because I want to relate to what we are looking at now. Matthew chapter 28. When you see what Jesus said here, it makes you acknowledge the Holy Spirit and to value and to know how to relate to him. Now let's look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. I mean, when Jesus, as the Son of God at that point in time, talking to the disciples, well, he was with them. But we know that he is going to go. He told them he was going to go. I mean, how can it be understood that he is assuring them that, and lo, behold, I am with you. He was referring to, as he goes, like we said, the God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are one. So as he left the earth, you know, Jesus Christ saying that I am with you, talking about God with us, the Holy Ghost was the one that was going to be manifested in our presence, you know, to enable us, empower us, and strengthen us to do that which was being commanded, you know, to the disciples at this very point in time. Now when you read on this what. And behold, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is Jesus Christ speaking. But was he going to be here? He was going to die. He was going to ascend or resurrect and ascend to heaven. But what's the, the heaven? Is it going to be here with us? Yes. But as the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So are you beginning to see how we have to recognize the Holy Spirit in our lives every single day of our lives? You know, it's very easy to just have this imagery or thought or consideration or looking at to Jesus and Jesus. And for some people, it's not even any of this, but maybe they look at Mary or whoever they look at in that respect. But we have to understand that when we say we love God, we love the Father, it's all to say we love Jesus, we love the Son of God. It's also to say we love the Holy Spirit. 
you know, we love God because He is God as well. So I'm pointing out the fact that the three are one. You know, God the Father obviously is in heaven. The Son came to this earth. And now, as the Son leaves the earth and goes to the Father in heaven, you know, the Holy Spirit comes down. He was sent by Jesus Christ to come down. Let's look at further scriptures making this point that we are looking at this very point in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. I'm sure you are following us in this respect. You know, as of recognizing what we are saying about the Holy Spirit. Look again with us in John chapter 14, what Jesus had to say. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father. Again, this is Jesus speaking here. I'm just taking this out of the context. So look at other scriptures. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. So who is this helper Jesus Christ is referring to? As we go, we can see that he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He was on this earth. He ascend, He was about to ascend. Okay? And he's telling the disciples, you know, that, I mean, at this point, it was not even the point of, uh, I mean, it, it, it was not even that point. He was addressing the believers, I mean, by the following disciples. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another. I mean, to look at the word another helper means that he existed when Jesus was here, he was as what? As our helper. You know, when you're looking at for anybody who you want to see as to help you, who do you look at to? Jesus. Jesus. He is the one that came to save us. He's our helper. But here we're talking about another helper, which is to say that as he goes, he, the Holy Spirit will come and manifest among us as another helper. Not a different person, not a force, as many people have said is. You know, so he, he come and he says, I will send another helper that he may abide with you forever. Now I can understand you saying, Oh, but that's what he's saying, because when a Christian be, when you become a Christian, Holy Ghost is in you. Yes, true. You know, he lives in us and he abides with us. We'll come to that. So he says, I pray that he will abide with you, even the spirit of truth. So you can look at him and say, Oh, the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of truth. There are many spirits out there. There are all kind of demonic and all kind of spirit there. If a man, even as we are, we are spirit. You know, but the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you want to know the truth, you can consult the Holy Spirit. You can open up to the Holy Spirit. If you want to understand even the truth of God, you can go to the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. That's why we always have to acknowledge and to depend on the Holy Spirit. You know, coming here this morning, I, 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 mean, I might have put some few things together, but certainly I know that I cannot. It's so challenging, difficult to do anything by my own ability. We need the Holy Spirit to communicate, to present, to preach, to share. You know, whatever has to be done and done accurately, it has to be actually Him just using us. So here it says that the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, as you can see there, the world cannot receive it because of, I mean, they, they cannot contain it. You know, the, the Bible talks about in the Corinthians, for we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But the world is not the temple of the Holy Spirit. The world is not the habitation. You know, we are the believers of Christ. We are supposed to all the time, I mean, and again it implies, why you got to keep your this body of yours in order that the Holy Ghost can always be that one in domain, sit on the throne of your heart, in control of everything that has to be done right. Hallelujah. Friend, I hope you're following us. So we're kind of today just kind of touching quite a few things all over the place, but hoping that, you know, you kind of get in the sense of what we're getting to. The whole point is, Jesus ascended, made his promises, and he began to say these things. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but we but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you now think about it i mean this this when jesus was speaking the things he says for he dwells with you but he will be in you hallelujah he will be in you you know let's go on i will not leave you orphans i'll I, 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 a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you will also live. And that day you know, and that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, 
And I mean, obviously, there were other things that he was speaking of here. But uh, let us look at to what was said in verse uh, verse 26. Jump to verse 26. He says, again, refers to the Holy Spirit. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now, we're kind of touching on some of these things so that we are very much aware of the Holy Spirit that we have. Because I know that many people have limited the Holy Spirit to just one thing. Especially for the Charismatics or the Pentecostals. All we have known and may like to talk about the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Speaking that language. And I said, when you come to know the Lord, and uh, when we say we are born again, and then for uh, that understanding, we believe that we can speak in some language called tongues, we settle there. And that to us is all about the Holy Spirit. No, brother, dear sister. And that's why we want to, in the few coming Sundays, to look into more aspect of who this Holy Spirit is. Because it's much more than you and I, the house, had been looking at. Hallelujah. And if we are coming to know Him as who He is, then we'll be able to, uh, to relate to Him, you know, to gain or to benefit in the maximum as the impact that He will make in our lives. There are several aspects of the Holy Spirit, you know, functionality, or why He is with us. And that's why we are looking, that's why we are looking at those things. And I hope you will follow us. Let me just kind of touch on a few things here in that respect. And uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. So He's our helper. He's our helper. If there's any sense that you and I do need anybody to help you live the life as a believer, then you want to turn on to the Holy Spirit. He is here with us. He is where you are. Hallelujah. He is spirit. That is the blessedness of the whole point of Christ when he ascended. You know, not at one point, being at one point in time, but now we have in him because we have in Christ, but everywhere as spirit, wherever we are. So today, Christ is with me here. Christ is with you there, but in spirit. The Holy Spirit here represents that. That's the manifestation of God wherever you are. So whatever you can look at to Christ or look at to God to do for you, He is there. You don't need to go to Jerusalem. You don't need to go to Israel. You don't need to go to a certain particular place. You know, He is wherever you are. Think about the deepest part of the sea. He is there. Think about us going as far as the space. He is there. Wherever any human being can go and has gone and would even go, God is there. Hallelujah. And is there as in spirit. Hallelujah. Thanks be to the holy, uh, holy name of God. So, brethren, talking about the Holy Spirit, we're going to be looking into more of who He is and what is the power of that which we refer to, the Holy Spirit power. You know, there's so much we're looking at. But if it's not with the power as Christ had mentioned, referring to the helper, the counselor. I mean, let's look at some other points here. Again, like I said today, just starting on pages, which we'll come to. When you're talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, He is another counselor, another uh, comforter. And when you're looking into Him in that respect, it makes you to see what He does. What does He do? One of the things that the Holy Ghost, as He comes, will do, and we'll be looking into more detail, is who? He comforts and reassures believers. He comfort and reassure assure believers. He strengthens and equips the church. He is here to do so. When Christ le left, he, he, he assured the disciples he will be with them. The church as we are today need the Holy Spirit. We just don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need him in full, active in our lives. We have to make room and to always see to it that you know, we do not what quench or uh, uh, push him off, you know, to repel him. Because he's a person, you know, he knows and feels those things. So that's some of the things you've got to be looking at in this very respect. He does that. He teaches and instructs as believers. So I'm just pointing some of this into what we'll be looking into more detail. As I keep saying over and over again, he teaches. The Holy Ghost, as he, the Jesus Christ said, he has to go, he will send the helper to us. He was to come to teach us. He was to come to help the believers. He was to come to, obviously, to instruct us, to empower us. All this is about empowerment. Every functionality of the Holy Spirit towards us, the believers, 
wants to empower us so that we can live this life that is in order, that is in accuracy, that is pleasing in the sight of God. You know, for many people, you know, would wonder how we can live this Christian life. Some people wonder how how can this person do live, I mean, live this particular way. You know, yes, certainly there are many things that you and I, you know, we know we cannot do had it not been the Holy Spirit. There are many things we can do because of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we are in Christ now, it is not us who are to live. It is Christ that lives in us. The power of the Holy Spirit enables you and I to live the life that is what pleasing in the sight. I say all this to encourage you, to encourage you to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in your life. Because many times it does not, you know, get, it doesn't get to that extent of our consideration. You know, we mention those things, but we don't see how we are to respect, we honor, uh, uh, create that environment, you know, that place for the Holy Spirit to live in us, to enable us, to empower us, you know, even to do what we, uh, that assignment that we've entrusted. Because certainly, we've been told to go into the nations and preach the gospel. Look at what we read in Acts chapter 1. It was needful that they stayed where they were at that point in time. Now we read it, I mean, when you read the further down in Acts, you know, we are, being, uh, we, ex we, are, we are being told what actually did take place. The day of what we refer to, the day of the Pentecost, or when that day the Holy Ghost came upon the disciples and manifested, and many, many signs that were even experienced. And after that, what they did, the empowerment they received, and they were able to go out there. You know how many times we talk about, let's go out and reach out to their brothers and sisters, you know, that have not known the Lord. Let's reach out to these people who have not come to know. We recognize Jesus Christ, the Lord and personal Savior. And uh, we want to do it, but we just don't know how to go about it. Certainly, we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. So, brethren, I just kind of uh, bring us to this very day to make us see how important it is for the Holy Ghost to come when Jesus said he has to go. And as he comes, what he is to do in each one of our lives. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit empowerment in the believer's life. There's so much we want to look at uh, as we go on, you know, looking at that subject of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. So what we see here, you know, as we look into that scripture, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea. It speaks of what? That, that ability to proclaim, to go out there. And we can see that, you know, in the life of Peter, right after that, <laughs> right after that day, you know, being, Peter was one that denied who, who Christ several times. You know, he was such a, if you can say, a weak person. Although he's, he was a human being, as we all, and he, 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 with Jesus Christ, thought, oh yeah, he can do certain things by, his, by himself. But, he failed, you know, before, at the, at the, at the crucifixion uh, time of Jesus Christ, he failed by betraying Jesus several times, you know, but when that day came, somehow there was a, a transformation in the life of Peter, and Peter was able to stand and to declare and to make a pronouncement of exactly who Christ Jesus is. So brethren, I kind of today just want us to just look at this very thought of uh, allowing the Holy Ghost. How can we allow the Holy Ghost to impact our lives, to lead us, to direct us, to guide us, you know, to be effective, you know, of the very design of God for His coming on this earth, you know, the functionality of Him, you know, in our lives, so that at the end of the day, we are able to do what God has called us. Because you know how it is for us to think, I am a believer, and that is enough. No. We are not just being born again. We have been born again to obey the words of God. We have been born again to live the life of Christ. We have been born again to walk in the ways, the statutes, the, to follow the teachings of Christ. We have been born again as becoming Christians, followers of Christ, to live as Christ expects us to live, to be Christ-like, you know, to bring glory and honor to His holy name. By simple words, we have been born again to obey God and His teachings. We could not, we cannot do this by our own ability. We cannot in any way, as much, however much we think we love God and want to do this, we can't do it. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to come to that very place, you know, as we recognize Him as to who He is and to be able to open up to Him. Hallelujah. 
So yes, the Holy Spirit and uh, who He is and, uh, and, and, and uh, what He's to do in each one of our lives. We'll be looking into this, as I said, in the further day, and today we just want to just stick with that, you know. So, how, how, how is your life? You know, are you in this very place where you do recognize the fact that you need the Holy Spirit in your life? You know, don't you forget, we'll be coming to that, don't you forget that, you know, the Holy Ghost is who He is. He is God. God is righteous. God is holy. God cannot come and live. In an environment of filth, an environment of unrighteousness, an environment of unholiness, you know. And for that matter, we have to be what, be prepared. We have to be what sanctified. We have to be set apart. We have to be this kind of people. Even our thoughts, in all considerations that we have to have, we have to let it be that which is what giving the Holy Spirit room to live in our lives. For as we allow the Holy Ghost to lead us and direct us. You know, we are able to do exactly, you know, what God requires of our lives. I'm sure you agree that the Holy Ghost will not lead us to failure. There's no way the Holy Ghost will leave us what? Failure. You know, there's no way. Because what? He is God himself. I say that God will lead you to fail. No. If that great teacher, the Holy Spirit, comes into your life, he will teach you. Things that may be difficult of understanding, he is able to bring it to simplicity of understanding. He is able to, I mean, he's able, he enables us, you know, to follow those teachings and to respond to those teachings. So today I encourage you, today we just want to pray and prepare our hearts. Maybe you have been a Christian for all this very time, but it's as if you are still, you don't know why you are still living in a life that doesn't seem to speak of anything as of the power of God in your life. And you seem to think that it is for some people. No! The Holy Ghost is not just for some people. Actually, make sure of that. I want to look at to this scripture. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Open that with me right now. You know, that was a prophecy. I'm just making mention of the fact that he's, the Holy Spirit is not for some people. It's for it's a prophecy being fulfilled, you know, towards us all. Joel 2, verse 28 says this. And it shall come to pass <clears throat> afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your holy men shall dream dreams. And young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I mean, in the Old Testament, as we read here, you know, this was speaking of that which is which was yet to come. We are talking about the Holy Spirit in this very case, the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. You know, to understand, God spoke about Him coming. I mean, I said that in the Old Testament, you know, the Holy Spirit empowered people. He didn't live in them permanently. I don't know whether you get what I'm trying to say. There were people that were led in, at in certain instance of life, God empowered them to do certain things by the power of the Spirit, but they were not permanently live having the angel in them. So you can hear in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon such and such. So we'll come to that. Again, like I said, we're going to be looking into this thing so that we can all get a proper context for which you know we can address the subject of the Holy Spirit. But my prayer, and uh, our look at this very day, is the fact that when Jesus, it was needful that Jesus had to go. And that, that blessedness of such a gift, the presence, the manifest of the Holy Spirit will come. He was coming to empower us. He was coming to strengthen us. He was coming to lead us. He was coming to equip us. He was coming to prepare us. He was coming to empower us to be able to preach the gospel, you know, to those that are out there, to all the people that are, every nation you can think about. That's what the Bible says. So this very day, are we ready for the Holy Ghost to take over our lives? He is here already. The Holy Ghost is not about to come. He is here. It is us asking ourselves whether we are ready to receive the fullness, you know, the fullness, the full impartation, the full activity of God manifested upon our lives. Are you ready, you know, to make your life available? And saying such means what? We have to what, break away from what? From sin. We have to break away from anything that does not bring glory and pleasure to God. And so doing, we'll be able to embrace the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray this moment of time, whatever you want? 
I don't know what you may be going through, where you are in the, your relationship with God. But if there's anything in it today, we are looking at making us to be aware of it's as to how we can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. But there should not be anything for us to ever that will serve as a hindrance, an obstacle, something to cause him not able to come upon our lives. Because you will necessarily know that there's no way the Holy Spirit is going to come in to, to live in us when there is something that's already living in us. Our hearts should be open to him. So wherever you are beginning to pray and open your heart to him now, tell God, you are a Christian, yes. You have, I mean to say you have accepted Jesus Christ, yes. You know, but tell God as to how today you are a child of God, you are opening your heart to him. You want this change, this transformation, this revival to come upon you, like we sang that song, Reign in Me again. Reign in Me again. Are you telling God to reign in you? What sort of life are you living right now? You go in and out of a church, you know, you're part of those that have been singing, you're here maybe every Sunday, but are you truly living this life of readiness? And even as we speak within the context of the Spirit, wanting Him to come and take over your life now. My dear brother, my dear sister, let's pray. Look up to Him and tell Him, I really dedicate my life. I open up my heart to you. Holy Spirit, the days to come, I want you to lead me. I want you to direct me. I want you to guide me. I want you to take over my life. I want you to possess my mind. I want you, everything that is in my life that is not acceptable, I want you to take control over it. I come this morning. You know, tell him. I want you to join. Whenever you are, just begin to ask me, as, as, you, as, as we pray. Just tell him. Just offer to him now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we pray, O oh God, knowing very well that you will send forth your Son, Jesus Christ, to us here on earth. He came and declared you the Father to us. He taught us and He did all that you sent Him here to do. And O oh God, today we know that as we have received Him into our heart, believing that He is the only Savior, He is the only one that can be offered as that sacrificial lamb for the cleansing of our sin to bring us close back to you. Lord, we thank you that as on earth, finishing His work and going, He made us promise. He said that He is going to go. We know today, Holy Spirit has promised, has been promised to us. We know He is here with us because Christ has left. Christ has come to you, Father. And we pray in the name of Jesus that our lives will never, never be the same. From the very time we even gave our life to you, Christ, to now, that we will not be the same. We open our heart to you. Dear brother, dear sister, open your heart to Him now. Open your heart to Him. Let Him, if I let Him speak to you, let him bring to your knowledge. Let him tr make you see those things. There are things in our lives that will make it not possible for him to function full as he's supposed to. Yes, God is merciful. God is gracious. God is loving. But you know what? Open your heart today. I don't know, but I just want to encourage you. Open your heart to him. And let's turn away from anything that is not acceptable. Let the Holy Ghost have such a free way. From the top of you to the sole of your feet, your heart open. Let him take over this moment of time. Tell him, I come. Make me anew. Make me anew. Cleanse me. Let go all those fears. Let go all those things that are not acceptable, pleasing in your sight. Let go of those things. There are things maybe in our life we are not even considered to be issues. The Bible says that the little foxy that spoils the vine. There might be that little. There might be things that are may seem significant, but there may be things that could cause you. And not even to be hearing the voice of the of the Holy Spirit, if you like. You know, not to hear Him lead you, direct you, and guide you. You may be struggling in some area of your life. I want to encourage you this very turn on to Him. Turn, as you turn on to God, begin to see the Holy Spirit taking over now. He is this God that comforts. You may have gone through some difficult times, some challenging times that you require. That Holy Spirit, you know, Him function your life, to comfort you. One way or the other, we all have gone through some kind of uh, sorrow, some challenge, some difficulty. And you know what? Men can come and say all sorts of things to us. They can come and console us. They can come and, you know, make some effort as if they are comforting us, sympathize with us. But that does not bring that comfort that the Holy Ghost can offer. Today, wherever you are, I just want to encourage you, open up to the Holy Ghost, for He is the comforter. Paracletos, he is the comforter. He is the one of the, of the three. 
you know, that is here on earth and is close to you than you can imagine. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient, you know, and he, he is here as omnipotent to comfort you. Whatever it is, I want you to open up to him and he will comfort you. Let go whatever that has been, 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 been difficult for you. It's always been your, 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 your head on your pillow, you know, sorrowing, you know, for maybe the loss of a dear one. You know, uh, uh, thank you, Jesus Christ. You know, for whatever it is, let him take over now. He's the only one. Yes, he's the only one. And no one can say that, oh, yeah, uh, we have got it all. But he is there. Hallelujah. Father, we come before you. We thank you for offering us the Holy Spirit. We thank you that today he is here with us. He will comfort us. He will strengthen us. He will build us. Whatever any of us might be going through now, we thank you that we can receive him. You know, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that as we are engaging on this subject, as this topic, even as we are just beginning, I pray that you will unravel, you will bring this truth to us so that we'll be able, oh God, to walk in the alignment of the word of God to that effect in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, before we will we, we, we'll come to the close of our day, I want you also to remember this. We've been commanded to go into the whole world. That is to you, a believer of Christ. I believe in Christ. It's not the first time I, I, I believe that you are hearing this. The Bible says we should go into the world and preach the gospel. We should let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and give glory to the Father who is in us. We should be as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. There is so much given unto us as the kind of life we're supposed to live. You know, we're supposed to be witnesses of Christ. We're supposed to go into the world and evangelize. Once again, it's as if we have not been able to do that as effective as we could and should be. You know what? Turn unto the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is here this very to empower you. Empower me. Are we looking up to Him? Are we inviting Him? Are you telling Holy Spirit, take over my life? Empower me. I'm here this very day. You are in me, but come and possess me, lead me, direct me, make me bold. Give me this confidence to be able to share your word of truth, even to that brother, to that sister. I find it difficult to do this. Be here with me this very day. This very day, as we're talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, what He is here to do, as to empower you. Look at what He said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses here, wherever you are, so Jerusalem, and then to the Samaria and to the utmost part of the world. So, this very day, let us also pray, as we pray in our heart, even looking into the subject of the Holy Spirit, but that you will make you that person that is endued with power, endured with power. Hallelujah. You know, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, that you'll be bold and confident like the days of Peter, that you'll be able to stand even for certain men and women whom you think you will never be able, every time you want to speak the word to somebody about Christ, you know, there's that sense of fear, there's worry. You know, somebody comes to you and you could see clearly that he needs this, he needs the word of God. Ah, oh, let us pray this morning that the Holy Ghost, Father, we come before you again in the name of Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit, you be with us this very day, you empower us, empower us. Enable us as we make ourselves available, breaking ourselves loose from any hindrances and obstacles, anything of the world that may have entangled us so that you have not been able to work in our life as you should. We come this very day in Jesus Christ's name that touch every man's uh, life here, every woman's life here, every believer's life here. In the name of Jesus Christ, make us your servant. Holy Spirit, lead us, order our steps even this very day, even this very week. That wherever our God we are to go, we can go with confidence and boldness and strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for what God you have done, doing, and even about to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, even our midst, the Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus Christ's name, hallelujah. So, brethren, we are touching some few things in our prayer this very day. You know, as we kind of are uh, uh, beginning to look into this subject of the Holy Spirit. And I try that in the coming days. Before we would have come to now, next, you know, looking into the person of the Holy Spirit and uh, the, the the references to Him and all the many aspects of it, I'm sure you would have yourself opened the Word of God, look into it before we even do so. So next week we can be following us systematically. Today I just thought we should just touch on a general overview, touching on a few things to get our heart prepared and looking forward, and more also to pray, making ourselves available for His functionality. It's my prayer that you will be, will be responding to him, even this very day and the days ahead. God, richly bless you. And if you are that man, woman, that have not known God, 
I believe the Holy Ghost is even speaking to you now. We refer to him as the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Ghost, but he's the Holy Spirit. You know, wherever you are now, you want to give your life to him, do so. I want to pray with you. I want you to lead, give your life to Christ Jesus. You want to become a new person. You want him to take over your life. You want to receive eternal life. He is the seal of salvation. The Holy Spirit, is, according to Ephesians, he is the seal of our salvation. When we receive this Christ, he seals it. Hallelujah. He's enabling, enabling us to live this life. Not as we used to live at those days of our own. Are we able to live a life that is pleasing in the sight, in the newness of life, the new creation reality begin to manifest? So if you're that person, you want to pray, just, offer, uh, just pray over, uh, take this prayer as your prayer and receive Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I want to pray with this brother and sister who is out there participating with us this very day, but I want to know you and to receive even the Holy Spirit. And I pray this moment of time that God, you touch him as he prays this prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that you gave to the entire world. Today, I recognize, acknowledge, He is my Savior, He is my Lord, He is the one that came to this earth, and I know His death gives me salvation. I believe with my heart, and so I confess all my sins, all my wrongdoings, everything that I have found myself do. In my past life, I repent from it. This very day, make me a new person. As I receive you, Holy Spirit, upon my life, as I receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart, let the Holy Spirit take over my life to enable me to live this life in a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. Thank you for making me a new person. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have been able to pray this prayer wherever you are, I just want to encourage you. This is what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, believes in him, will not perish, will have everlasting life. And if you have confessed with your heart, confess with your mouth, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you would be saved. Now the Holy Ghost is here to lead you, to direct you, to guide you, to enable you even to go through this journey, this path of growing and maturing in him. And I trust that as we go down the weeks ahead, that you begin to see your life growing, developing, maturing. Be this man and woman, being fruitful and responding to all that God has commanded us to do. God richly bless you, dear brethren. I think that's how far we can get to this very day. And I trust that as you live the rest of the week, uh, the sun is shining out there. May your light also shine unto all the people of the world to know who Christ is. Hallelujah. That they will be affected and come to know him as well. Have a wonderful week. We look forward again to see you. May, the, may your life so shine before me that they will not see you, but they'll see Christ in you and so be able to give glory to him. Hallelujah. Be the salt of this earth. Be the salt of this earth and be the light of the world. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we look forward to see you once again as we continue on the subject of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.